Okay, so we gotta help more villagers and stuff. But there's a box! Give me the box, yoink! Oh, I guess I can't use the medicinal herb. Just like the Tales games where there's the capacity there. This person must be dreaming too. It's so we're gonna help you out. Way, yes. So we're gonna help you out. Sure, enter this villager's dream. Excited to go back there. That dream world sort of creeps me out. <laughs> Perhaps you should spend less time complaining and more time getting on with the mission. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I guess I will. I breathe air scented with death and resist the urge to laugh. For I know it will sound like the words of a madman. How long have I been in this fresh hell? My box, my prison, is tucked beneath a stairway in the long unused catacombs of some infinite castle. Outside, I hear the sounds of a funeral dirge that plays without end. Light has no place here. Wind is a forgotten friend. I pray for death to come, but he forsakes me. Time passes, and eternity slips by in the single tick of the clock. Someone knocks on my prison. Was that what was going on in uh, Dark Souls 2 there again? Like, it's been a little while, so I need to Oh yeah, I guess it kind of was. Like, the giant memories in Dark Souls 2. Anyone there? I hear an unfamiliar voice say, My savior! I claw at the door of my jail, embedding thick splinters under my ragged nails. I scream for help. I laugh. I sob. Surely this is the product of my addled mind. Surely it cannot be true. Help me, I cry. For the love of all the gods, help me! Impossibly. I hear the sound of a lock being torn out and falling to the floor. As the door suddenly creaks open, I have just enough time to see a silver-haired boy and a floating book before the light pours inside. My eyes, accustomed to blackness, explode with pain, and I am forced to turn away. Who are you? I ask, shaking hands, covering my face. How have you come to this place? I am Grimoire Weiss. This is Harmonia. Long have we been searching for you. Now come. Stand. We shall awaken from this nightmare together. The one known as Harmonia extends his hand and pulls me from the cell. Though my eyes are slow to adjust to freedom, my eyes are keen as ever, and they recognize the staccato sounds of heavy rain. Every time I hear heavy rain, I'm always gonna think, Sean! 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 Anyway, uh, sorry. Um, I never thought to hear that again, I whisper. Would that this were not such a terrible storm, said Grimoire Weiss. Look at your feet. I force my eyes open and see water pooling around my ankles and lapping at my shins. There's so much of it. Yes, and more comes each moment we delay. If we do not make good our escape, we shall all drown in this castle. We know you are weak, but you are our only hope to survive this place. Time, that long forgotten friend, made itself known again. I nodded my head and swore to save my rescuers, no matter the cost. The castle catacombs are a maze, twisting upon themselves like the endless entrails of a giant. I squint down the dim corridors and proceed north. Oh, and proceed north. At the end of the corridor, I find a row of twenty gorgeous canopy beds resting atop the carpet of velvet, all covered in a thick layer of dust and cobwebs. Searching for the door to the next room, I come upon a shapeless mass of gray matter. It has been shoved against the side of the wall. Despite my fever, I see the outlines of a door just beyond. When I reach out a finger and touch a piece of the mass, it turns to dust and drifts away on the wind. Realization slowly dawns, and I fall to my knees and weep. Corpses. I face a mountain of charred and crumbled corpses. I look from it to the beds and back again until the horror dawns full upon me. Someone has piled these bodies into a tower and set them ablaze. Whether they were alive or dead, I do not know. The sanity and sanity will not prevent me to consider the proposition further. I make a sound, whether scream or laughter, I cannot be certain. Then my mind grants me merciful blackness. And I find myself opening the door and leaving that most terrible of rooms. I squint down the dim corridors. South was the way we came, right? So, um, east? I don't know. I squint down the dim corridors and, uh... D should I find, like, an answer key to this? I think in the, uh, video that I saw, like, a couple weeks ago of Near Replicant, all weapons, it did actually show, like, the route in this. I'm, yeah, I'm gonna look at this real quick, because I'm sketched the heck out. Because I'm honestly sketched the heck out here. 
let's see here. Because, um... Let's see here. So if I go through... Yeah, so they go east. Okay, so I guess I guess right there. And then in the video, they, um... They proceed north. And then... <laughs> yeah, I'm just gonna go off of YouTube here is what I'm gonna do. And then, um, proceed east. Okay. At the end of the path, I find myself in a great hall with only the sounds of rain for comfort. The waterlogged red carpet squishes beneath my feet as I approach the center of the room. Once there, I behold a beautiful dining table upon which rests china and silver of the finest construction, as well as the remains of a fantastic feast. As my eyes continue to adjust, I see many chairs surrounding the table, each holding a dinner guest. Oh, the reason why this is showcased in, like, the all-weapons thing is because I remember seeing, like, you help these two villagers and it gives you one of the weapons, apparently. Noticing movement, I approach the chair at the table's head, but as the truth of the matter dawns on me, I recoil in horror. The host of the feast is a corpse, as all are the invited guests. An army of foul, wriggling insects have made homes in their remains, and this is the movement I saw. This once splendid feast was now nothing more than a requiem for the damned. I take a moment to stay in my shaking hands, then slowly back away from the table. Desperate to lose sight of the abomination before me, my gaze lands on the chairs upon which the dead are seated. It's also just now occurring to me, I remember I changed the gain on my microphone at like the frag venue because it was a different distance from me, but I can probably adjust it back to like its normal setting. So is this maxed out? Okay, this is like the low amount, right? And this is like the, uh, the super high amounts that you're probably not gonna like it. No, this is the low amounts. So it was closer to the super high amounts before. So like this. And that might actually be a little bit better for the microphone. Like this, right? Maybe, I don't know. If I adjust things here. I don't know, I probably should have thoroughly tested this earlier. That's what I probably should have done. But now I gotta, where's my mouse cursor? No, gosh darn it. There, something like this. Hopefully the, uh, hopefully the audio is a-okay. Maybe I'll adjust the gain a little bit just to like here. I don't know. Something like that. Kind of quiet now? Okay. So something like this-ish. Can't hear you. Sound far away. Okay. So something more akin to what it was like before is actually better. Okay. Well, yeah, this is pretty A-OK -okay then now, right? And then maybe I can adjust the game back. Sorry. Sorry about the whole mess here and stuff. Um, <laughs> But this is, this is fine now, right? This might have just been closer to what it was set to before. Maybe I didn't need to adjust anything. Whoops. Um, this is a mistake. For the chairs prove to be even more terrible than the feast itself. Each one is covered in a layer of spikes that run up from the seat, up, run from the seat, up the back, and down the arms. Okay, this is good. Okay. This explains the color of the carpet beneath my feet. I can only pray that the unfortunate diners were dead when the meal began. For if not, then it is a simple task to envision the agonized screams that must have sprung forth from their mouths. My mind grasps frantically at the possibility that these souls had committed some terrible crime for which this was punishment. Though in truth, I suspect they had committed no crime at all. There would be no tomorrow for these unfortunates. This was their last supper. I squint down the dim corridors. I'm going to YouTube. So they skip through all the text and stuff super fast. Thank goodness for the sake of, you know, a video tutorial kind of thing. And then they, uh, proceed north. If, if there is only one correct route and that's it, I don't know how the heck you do it normally. Like, without looking it up, that is. Against all hope, we make it to the front door. Break it down, someone cries. And so I give myself to the effort. In tandem with Harmonia and Grimoire Vice, I slam my body against a thick, sturdy door. On the third try, it gives way, and we find ourselves sprawled on the ground outside the castle. You did it normally? Hmm. Is there, like, does it hint at some of the answers somewhere? You do it through- you do it through brute force, oh! <laughs> well, storm is in retreat. Clouds above are still dark and foreboding. But to the west, I can see a thin shimmer of sunlight trying to break through. How can I thank you? I cry as tears join the rain on my cheeks. I would surely have died in there. Looking down, I suddenly notice that my dress is in tatters and sheepishly try to cover my exposed skin. Your dress, asks Vice. You are a woman, you are a woman madame. I am. I prefer the two a smile. I suppose that comes as something of a surprise, seeing as how I exist only in the form of words. 
I mean, it's not too surprising considering it's a 50-50, you know? But what do I know? Um, I can see that the one known as Harmonia is disappointed that the torn dress will be given no further description, but he hides it well. Wow. Uh, with a nod and a shrug, three of us set forth to our awakening. But behind us, an awakening of another is of another kind is taking place. A fire emblem awakening. Black smoke fills the abandoned castle, providing the countless damned souls inside with their final shroud. After a moment, the castle's windows shatter with a mighty roar. A fresh breeze blows through the hallways and corridors, clearing the smoke away for good. As we watch in awe, uncountable black shadows slowly flicker to life, crossing to and fro in front of the broken windows. The castle's dead have awakened to their new life as shades. Is there gonna be a battle out here with shades? Oh, uh, it's this camera angle now. Hmm. Do you have anything to say about that? Oh, well, you're not cloaked anymore. Hopefully there will be no labyrinth next time. I hear that. Next time on Dragon Ball Z. Okay, so we did one of them. Let me just quickly go to the save point and then do the other, I think. Just to be extra safe, you know? Let's go ahead and have a quick save here. Cool. Neat. Alright, and then we have a little bit of a chat with you and enter another dream. Hi, so you have a dream that's going on? And another victim. <laughs> Even though you look wide awake. Yeah, enter this villager's dream. You would be into all this word stuff, Vice. Even I have my exceptions. Unironically, absolutely amazing. What, that labyrinth and the way that it, like, described leaving through the things? A colony of massive sculptures was visible in the distance, their tall forms scraping against the sky. Vice and Harmonia had never seen such a sight, and their eyes widened as they tried to take it in. <laughs> Is it gonna be one of those kinds of dreams? Oh, this one has voices. As Vice considered his answer, the sun beat down on them with renewed ferocity. He said. Okay, um, and now it's no longer voiced. Under this heat, a mirage or two would hardly be an unexpected sight. Monia nodded and wiped the sweat off his brow, leaving a trail of sand in its place. He thought he'd never been so thirsty. But yeah, Lego and Words trigger your imagination of this situation because it describes uh, basically like reading. Yeah, that's not often that we get like this level of writing description in a video game because you usually just see it happening instead of like, you know, getting text like this. This is a strange video game, isn't it? The ancient road on which they walked was black and cracked with age. Here and there, thin wisps of grass pushed up through the rocky surface as if defying those who had laid this material down over their home. The heat reflecting from the road made Harmonia lightheaded. His feet hurting, he crouched down to rest. I don't know how much longer I can do this. Is someone playing a joke on us or what? The complaining had already begun. Vice tried not to let his eyes roll too much. A joke, he said. No, no joke. This road leads to the city of art. I don't know who's speaking here. Perhaps the path itself is simply some manner of grand artistic work. You don't sound very sure of yourself there. I don't know who, uh, who's speaking here, but, um, perhaps not. But thinking of it in this way might make it easier for you to bear. Monia glanced at Vice's grinning face, shook his head, and resumed walking. As time passed, Harmonia's feet grew more painful, his throat drier than he thought possible. That's actually probably a pretty good reminder to do, like, a quick water break, honestly. I really don't drink enough water when I stream, so that's probably a good, uh, a good reminder there from the game, you know? So, I mean, okay, well, <laughs> I guess I didn't notice there. Ah, uh, well. Um, as time passed, from his feet grew more painful, his throat drier than he thought possible. He tried not to look further than the next step ahead, because the bright sunlight made him hesitant to trust his own senses. We are definitely getting closer, said Vice in an effort to cheer his companion. Yes, this much is certain. Encouraged, Harmonia lifted his gaze. Suddenly, he stopped walking, choosing instead to stand in the middle of the road with his mouth and eyes wide open and his finger pointing in the distance. Water, he cried. It's water. Water, asked Vice. Preposterous. I don't see any water. Over there, just ahead of us. Look, the sun is reflecting off of it. Yeah, it's always, always good to do that. Without waiting for a response, Harmonia sprang to life and bounded toward the sight. What in the... There was no water. 
There was nothing but sand in every direction. Harmonia closed his eyes and sighed as Vice floated up behind him and chuckled softly. I believe this is known as a mirage, he said. Many a desert traveler has spoken of such things. Harmonia shook his head, bewildered. Suddenly, he pointed off in the distance, his eyes wide once more. Wait, there it is. I just missed it. Look, it's right there. Harmonia sprinted off again, leaving Vice with no choice but to follow. After a few minutes of running, Harmonia came to a halt. I could have sworn it was right around here. Confused, he put his hands up to his eyes and rubbed them vigorously. As soon as he stopped, he noticed a blue, shimmering pool of clear water just over the next rise. With a shout, he bounded off in search of it. The chase continued for nearly an hour, until an exasperated vice finally floated up to Harmony and struck him in the face with his cover. Enough, you blithering idiot! Stop this at once! There is no water here! Harmonia's face clouded. There isn't? There's not. And perhaps next time you will listen to me when I tell you as much. Vice paused for a moment, then continued speaking in a slightly kinder tone. However, I suppose this mad chase was not altogether wasted. It seems we have arrived in the City of Art. Harmonia looked up. Stretched out before him was a row of impossibly tall sculptures. Their journey was at an end. They're huge! cried Harmonia, completely forgetting the heat and pain of the past few hours. I've never seen anything so big. Each sculpture was formed from roughly the same shape, a tall rectangle that stretched up toward the sky. But that is where the similarities ended. Most were covered in panes of glass that reflected light in a thousand directions, while others seemed to be nothing but frames of steel. Some had tall spires on their tops, while others possessed triangular caps. What kind of city is this? said Harmonia. Where are the people? Where are the houses? Perhaps the land is intended exclusively for artistic use. The debate continued as they made their way through the city. Miracles of artistry were everywhere. Great iron crates with wheels sat silent on steel rails. Beautifully carved works with lights of red, amber, and green dangled over every street. As they moved away from the massive sculptures, they found a great array of smaller ones. Some were covered in glass or brick, but many were composed of materials they had never before encountered. The sheer variety of colors and styles was staggering. Unable to find a theme or purpose to the abstract works about around them, Harmonia and Vice eventually fell silent. On the outskirts of the city, they discovered three sculptures in the shapes of humans. Harmonia uttered a shy of relief as he approached them. Finally, I was getting tired of modern art. The three statues were indistinguishable, except for a single word chiseled into their right arms. One read Alpha, one read Beta, and the final one read Gamma. As Harmonia moved to touch the nearest statue, a bird flew from the top of one of the sculptures. A lighting, wait, yes, a lighting on the statue's shoulder emitted a brief, beautiful song that took the form of words. Only one form is real, the others are false. The real form will always speak the truth. The false ones will only speak lies. With that, the bird departed. As if on cue, the three statues shuddered to life, acquiring color and form as they began to breathe. Hey, look at that, said Harmonia. They're alive. The triplets bowed low before Harmonia. Please, said Alpha. You have to get me out of this nightmare. I'm real. Stop lying, said Beta. Turned to Harmonia and threw his hands into the air. Alpha's a fake, you know. I'm the real one. What a load of crap, said Gamma. Beta's fake. Everyone knows I'm the only real one around here. A respective pleas given. Three statues returned to their frozen state as silence once again enveloped the city. When you consider all these statements, only one of them could be the real thing, said Vice. Harmonia furrowed his eyebrows and considered his answer. Only one form is real, the others are false. The real form will always speak the truth. The false ones will only speak lies. If I could see all the things again, so I could, you know, be thinking about it there. Anyway, I'm gonna look at the video because it's not gonna show me the things again, I don't think. Um, but yeah. Gamma gets a vote just because that was the only one that cussed. Um, the, in the video, they select beta, apparently. But yeah, I wish that it could show, like, you know, all their lines again so I could, you know, think it through and such. Maybe that's what happens when you select I don't have a clue. But yeah, um, I guess I'm gonna select beta in that case. So I'm gonna do, the real one is beta. Harmonia's voice betrayed a low, notable lack of confidence. 
He was relieved to see Vice nodding at him. If Alpha were telling the truth, began Vice in a dry tones of a lecturer, Beta and Gamma would be fakes. But in that case, Gamma's claim that Beta is fake would be the truth, even though Gamma is a liar. Therefore, that theory crumbles. Now, let us presume that Gamma spoke the truth. That makes Alpha and Beta liars. In this situation, however, Beta is calling Alpha a liar to leave us with two statues telling the truth. Finally, let us assume that Beta is telling the truth. If so, Alpha and Gamma's lies would make sense. Therefore, Beta must be real. Also, because I don't need answers anymore, I'm going to switch back to my stream manager really quickly. As Vice finished his explanation, Alpha and Gamma crumbled soundlessly into dust, while Beta sprang to life once more. Congratulations, villi- Oh, congratulations, villager, said Vice in a cheerful tone. Time to awaken has arrived. Thank you for saving me, cried the villager. He dropped his knees and bowed his head as low as it could go before an uncomfortable harmonia pulled him to his feet. Why did you have a dream like this? asked Vice. Have you been to this city before? The villager slowly looked around at the bizarre objects and sculptures that dotted the landscape, then shook his head. I... I don't think so. I mean, it's impossible, right? There's no way I could have ever been to a place like this. But at the same time, I feel like I've seen it before. Deja vu, muttered Harmonia. Just like the mayor. The vague sense of unease that struck Harmonia during the mayor's dreams spread once more through his mind. <sighs> that was rough. <laughs> I am positive I have seen that place before. Okay, that's enough. Don't need you getting all weird on me too. Okay, there. Neat. Now well, all the villagers can wake up, right? Yes, if the mayor's assumption was correct. I think I have had enough wordplay <laughs> to last a lifetime. Thank you very much. You're telling me. Anyway, let's go see the mayor. Alright, yeah, we did the, uh, we did the thing Bob. Yeah, this has been a very, very strange segment of this game, huh? Oh, my mustache wonderful. keeps getting my mouth. Thank you so much. Maybe I really should trim it instead of growing it out as much as I have been. But yeah. Here, I have something for you. Wasn't the, uh, wasn't the opening battle in a, uh, you know, it was like in the year 2050, something like that. It was near like a gas station kind of building or like convenience store kind of thing. And what looked to be like a post-apocalyptic world of some sort is what it looked like. That was describing a desert over there though, right? Um, obtained the one-handed sword Faith. Wow, Sweet! This looks valuable. I can really have it? Of course. It's apparently a weapon of some renown, but we have little use for it. Well, we appreciate it. Thank you again. For everything. Is it better than my uh, current weapon though, I wonder? Let's see here, so weapons. Let's see here. So faith, huh? Ooh, yes, okay. More attack power and it's very light, yeah. Oh, look how cool that is. So you have tall buildings, brick glass, just some just metal frames with green, amber, and red lights above the streets. I mean, could well be in that a case. So did I do all the things I needed to here? Okay. Put away the sword, yeah. It's a long sword, it's not quite like a Sephiroth length sword. But it's a pretty long and cool looking sword. Neat, neat. How many weapons to get now? Um, I can look at the uh, Vigia for all the ones of part one and tell ya. Let's see here. So, in this video that I have pulled up for like all the weapons, um, Nameless Blade, I have that. Lily Leaf Sword, I have that. Beast Bane, I don't have that, but I think you buy that in the shop, I think. Hold on. Yeah, so these are all the ones I have here. So yeah, Beast Bane is another one that you buy in the shop. Nirvana Dagger, I have that. Uh, we got it in like the uh, one thing or Bob. Moonrise, I have that. Rebirth, I have that. Earthworm's Claw, it looks like that's at the blacksmith in uh, the facade place there. So I might have to like grind for funds potentially. Um, Faith just got that one. Um, Blade of Treachery, you get, like, in the manor, apparently. I think that's one that you get from a, uh, from a box there, if I remember when I was going through the, uh, Vigia. Um, and then that's all the ones you can get during Act 1, because apparently the next one is Kusanagi, which you get at the start of Act 2. So the only ones that we have left for Act 1 are the Blade of Treachery in the manor, and we'll get to the manor at some point in the story anyway. The Earthworm's Claw, and, uh, the Beast Bane that are in a couple of respective shops, I think is the uh, case. I did not mean to be flipping there. 
so you could say like three more weapons for part one, I believe. Three more. Two that can be obtained right now. Assume I have the funds. How many funds do I have? 5k? I wonder if that'd be enough to afford those. Because I'm going to need to get them at some point anyway. Hmm. 